Welcome in. It is day 176, and you are speaking to the Meeples Champion. And today, I just got in, as I mentioned for many videos, a big haul of games for Christmas. One of them is a game that I played a boatload of on Board Game Arena. And so I now physically have the game. I haven't gotten to play the physical game yet. I've actually never played it in person, only online, but I'm really excited to get this one to the table soon. That game is... Ink and Gold. Now, in Ink and Gold, the concept is, is it's a push-your-luck game. You get five rounds, and in these rounds, you're going to flip a card over, and everybody's sharing this card. So if the card says it's worth 15 gems, and there's five of you, then everybody gets three gems. And then you have to individually all pick a card. Either you decide to keep going, or you decide to go back to camp. You reveal which action you're doing, and then you flip another card from the top if anybody is continuing. Now, during this, there are five different potential bad things to see. You could run into a fire or into spiders. You can run into a rock slide. And there are three cards of each of these. There are also artifacts. These are worth five points. Now, the concept is, is that you go into uh, an area where all of a sudden it's, oh, well, there's four of us. And there's 15 points, so we each get three, and three remain on it. And then we get to the next one, and it's, oh, this is only worth three points, so there's three points left on it. And none of us get anything from it. And then an artifact comes out. Well, when somebody decides to leave and go back to camp, we all reveal our cards. And if it's the only one person, they get everything that's left over. Meaning, yes, for that 15, we all got three apiece, and there's nothing left. But for those other ones, the extra gems... And in the case of the artifacts, all of that goes to the one person who left on that round. Now, if multiple people leave, you again go back to the gems. You go, okay, we had excess three here. We had an excess three here. We had two people leave. Add them together. It's six. You each get three. But if we, say, had seven gems, you'd each get three, and the seventh gem would remain. But when it comes to that, basically that totem or you know the, the, the artifact that you find, it has to be grabbed by an individual person. doesn't matter if there's two or three of them out there. It's just only one person can collect it if they're leaving. So you do this. Otherwise, you continue on. When something comes out, it doesn't end the round. So if fire comes out, you're fine. But if a second fire comes out, now the round ends. So you could get a fire, you could get a zombie, you could get spiders, you could get a rock slide. These could all be adding up. And it's greatly increasing the odds of you getting in danger because every time one of these hits the board, now the other two cards from its set become kill cards. So if all of a sudden you have all five cards are out, that means there are 10 kill cards in the deck. Now this is where it gets interesting because when you flip over a card and it kills somebody, you have to now remove the card that killed them from the game. Meaning, if you are keeping track and you know, hey, round one, this person stayed too long, they were killed by a spider. Round two, this person stayed too long, they were killed by a fire. Round three, there was another spider death. Now you know in round four, you can't die from that spider anymore. There's only one, so you can't flip two of them. And there's only two fires, so the odds of getting them both are pretty low. So these are the kinds of things that have it add up. So somebody who's paying attention, because this is primarily a memory game, can actually know I'm going to take the risk because I know that essentially the spiders are useless. There's nothing to worry about with them. And the fire is pretty low grade for the, for the scare tactic there. So you do this, you get to the next round. Whenever somebody leaves, all the points they had count. But whenever somebody gets killed, they get none of the points. It didn't matter where they came from. All points for the round are gone. You keep going until eventually you move on to the next round. And then you move up to the next one and the next one. You get your points. And when the final round gets here, you reveal the points that you had gathered. And then you see who wins. It's a fun game. It's quick. You can play with a lot of players or just a couple if you want. It goes really fast. I really enjoyed this game. We used to do this to finish off a night. We'd play two or three games in a row in like under 20 minutes. It was just one of those games that flew. I'm really pumped into my collection. But why don't we jump in? Let's talk our seven categories and see where this one really lands for us. When it comes to the art, I like the front of this box. This is a simple box. This is not huge. It's not something that's clunky. 
It's got a nice little picture on the front, and the cards are nice too. It's a good art. It's a thumbs up. When it comes to those components, primarily you're dealing with cards. But you've also got your little gems that represent the, the gems you're collecting. And you've got little characters that are kind of like a wooden meeple type character. It's all really good quality. Nothing I'm worried about breaking down. It all looks good. It's a thumbs up. That price, this game only comes in at 30 it's actually a reasonable price. It's not one I'm worried about as far as overspending and then not playing it very often. This is the kind of game that you definitely you're getting your money's worth because it's not too expensive and it's a game you play a lot at once. So it's a thumbs up there. Your difficulty. This game hits both sides. When it comes to kids around 10 and older and when it comes to beginners, Really easy to figure this out. It's not that difficult. You don't have to be a crazy advanced player to be able to go and play this. But for those expert and experienced players, you have a combination of, because it's so quick, it's not one that you're like, oh, I don't want to waste an hour on this simple game. You're putting five or ten minutes into a game, so that's not too much time. But if you like a good memory game, if you like push-your-luck games, if you like trying to figure out like how other players are playing and like, you know, who's going to be the first one to jump out trying to get that, that artifact, you know, it, it's a nice little bluffing game in a way too. I think this game hits for everybody. It's got to be a thumbs up. When it comes to the replayability, now, this is a game that I say hits in two different ways. You're not playing this game exclusively. This tends to be a game that you play at the beginning or the end of the night. And you, you tail end it, really, for me, after, you know, you finish up your big game and somebody or a couple people are kind of like, all right, heading home, and you go, oh, I still want to play something, but we don't have, like, enough time for a big game. And you pull this out and you go, let's play a couple rounds. At the same time, if you're doing a game day where you have a bunch of people getting together and you're looking for small games, this is one that's great to throw in there for, hey, let's play this for just kind of like a, a mindless hour or two of, yeah, we're not, nobody's really into playing a big game today. We're all hanging out, and this one can be played just five, six, seven games in a row for an hour. So I think this one has great replayability. It's got to be a thumbs up. Your keys to victory. So this is an interesting one. Essentially, your keys to victory is just leaving. When are you going to leave? Are you going to leave early? Are you going to leave late? So in my case, I tend to be somebody who I take some risks early on, but in the opposite way. I take the risk by jumping out really quick. You know, we, we get in and we see that we have one, two, three cards of gems in a row. We haven't gotten a single scare yet, but there's a bunch of extra gems. You know, you're playing a five-player game, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, there's three gems here, four gems there, four gems there. Wow, that's 11 bonus gems, and I'll leave without a single threat and snag the extra gems hoping that, A, we're going to see some threats coming out and they're going to have to leave soon and that will give me a big advantage, or B, that they don't leave and they end up losing the gems they have. But I'll try to leave early and snake some bonus gems in the first couple of rounds, hoping I can jump ahead. The risk is, is that now I'm gone, so if we were getting stuff out there before for five players, now you're dividing these numbers by four, and all of a sudden you go, oh, well, that, you know, that, that... 12 that was only two gems a piece is now three gems a piece and as people start to leave because now a threat does emerge all of a sudden you go oh wow maybe the next card that came out was an artifact and two players are like oh i want to get that and they both leave still no threat nobody gets the artifact now there's two players left and they're just scooping up the gems and then the first time that something shows up one of them leaves and all of a sudden you're like wow that guy got like you know, a 10 and, a, and an 8 came out, which isn't that much compared to what was out early. But all of a sudden, that was for them a bonus 9 gems. Plus, they grab all of a sudden this artifact. Now they got 14 gems. And you're like, man, my 11 doesn't look that good. And so there is that balancing. Are you after the artifacts? Are you trying to stay longer to get as many gems as possible? Are you leaving early to snake bonus gems? Are you paying attention to long game on how many of these things have been eliminated from the pile because in the final round there's the potential if somebody dies every round 
there's the potential up to four cards are pulled from the game. So for me, I think there's a lot of keys to victory in this game. It's just about how you play the game and how you try to walk that line. So it's a thumbs up. Unique. Is this game unique? So I think that the game is unique. And the reason I say that is, yes, there's plenty of other push your luck games. But I think the concept of the gems, the, the divisional setup of trying to each get a gem, but extras that don't get divided by get left over, artifacts coming in, cards that represent threats, double threat means actual death. All of that, I'm like, there's not a game I can think of that's really like that. And this game flies. A smaller game like this really shouldn't have a game comparable to it because it's not like it's a big game with three or four big mechanics and they're really trying to put together an experience where you might see, oh, well, there's another game with a theme and two or three of those mechanics and it feels similar. It's a small game with a lot fewer mechanics. So either you've got this game multiple times or you don't. And I really just can't think of another game that really does what this does. It's not to say they're not out there. It's just not one I've ran into. So I got to give it a thumbs up. Overall, what do I think? I'm not going to say that you have to buy this. But for me, if you have a group of friends or family that you like to play shorter games with, it's a must buy. And if you have a group that you like to play with on a regular basis, and you know that you occasionally like to kick off or end your night with a short game, again, it's a must buy. And if you're a big gamer and your issue is that you run into my family or my friends don't often want to get together for a big game or my game group can't meet that often, this is a great one to pull out because you don't need a lot of time to play it for a big group and if you can still play it with a small group. So it's one that you can actually get to the table for those of you who don't have a regular weekly like myself. I have a boatload of games here, and I have a weekly game, and there's a lot of games I'm not probably going to play more than once every two or three years because I just don't have the time. I wish I had multiple nights a week I was playing games, but I just don't right now. So for me, I understand that plight, and I think this game's a great one to fit in so that you know you're going to have a game you can get to the table. But that's just my opinion. Maybe you have a totally different experience, and if you do, that's totally fine. It's up to figuring out what games work for you what type of situations are best for the style game you want, for the style group you have. Well, it has been day 176, and we've been speaking about the game Ink and Gold. And you've been speaking to the Meeples Champion. Like, share, subscribe, and check down below in the description where I'll be adding an Amazon link in case you want to get this game for your collection. Until next time, I'll talk to you tomorrow.